Relationships are painful. Whether it's a family found or born to, friendships or romance, so often it seems their ultimate culmination is nothing but pain, frustration, and heartache. A little argument that spirals beyond reconciliation, an ideological difference that creates a permanent rift, or even worse, the most irreconcilable of partings, death. Why bother if it's all going to end one way or another, rarely with a happy one? Why open yourself emotionally when it leaves you vulnerable to such deep pain? Machia, when the promised flower blooms, believes strongly that there is value in such connections. However short, and no matter the inevitabilities, that it is and always will be genuinely worthwhile. At the outset of this film, we are introduced to the 16-year-old Machia, who belongs to a species known as the Yorths. They dedicatedly record their history and feelings by weaving cloth, and do not age past their mid-teens. Machia is offered some wisdom from the elder of their village that she should never fall in love outside of the Yorths, never know that pain. Shortly after this, their village is attacked by humans, but Machia manages to escape from them into the forest. There, she hears the crying of a baby child, and following the sound, finds a baby in the arms of its dead mother, their house pillaged by thieves. A passerby advises her against it, but Machia takes it upon herself to raise the child, believing that she cannot leave him for dead. Fortunately, Machia finds help from a nearby family, being unable to breastfeed the child and having little knowledge of what to do. This mother of two named Mido graciously decides to let her stay with them and helps her find work, and all together they become their own little family, enjoying this beautiful, joyous period of their lives. Relationships forged through fortune and circumstance. But these happy times are bookended with a symbolic occurrence. The old family dog, which was beloved by the children, passes in its sleep. As the now named child, Ariel, questions why they are burying him, unfamiliar with the concept of death, Machia runs off crying. She had been avoiding facing the facts facing that inner knowledge that she will far outlive her son, the one she loves most deeply. However, her will is reaffirmed with some supportive words from the mother's eldest son, Lane. She's a mother, she can't cry, and Machia recognizes that she must be strong, must bear this emotional burden to give her best to Ariel. Shortly after this, they have to leave. Machia has hid her identity thus far, but suspicions are arising. Machia and Ariel board a boat and set off, with expectations of never meeting them again. A relationship is left behind. It's sudden and unwanted, but unavoidable. Yet what does it leave them with? Only pain? Of course not. Machia has formed some of the foundational memories that will be the basis for her emotional connection with Ariel. She's learned by example many key parts of being a mother thanks to her time with Mido, learned to be responsible and to care for her son. The time is past, but it isn't gone. It still happened, and it still shaped her. The second period of their lives follows Machia working as a server at a bar, and as their special differences become more apparent, further signified by Ariel entering the emotional period of adolescence, strain is put on their relationship. Again, the film poses the question, will this still be worth it? The first conflict comes when Machia, exhausted from searching for work prior to getting the job at the bar, explodes at Ariel after seeing he had taken out the weaving machine and was using it without her permission, making even more mess for her to take care of. Ariel makes an attempt to cheer her up, but it is met with an equally frustrated rebuttal, and he runs off before Machia can stop him. Machia briefly wallows in her self-pity, but upon reading the cloth and discovering it says mother, she runs out after him in desperation. 
When she finds him, Ariel finally manages to cheer her up, promising that he will protect her, and they smile and laugh in loving embrace. Now a teenager, Ariel has become distant, no longer calling her mom, as he is now more acutely aware of how others perceive his relationship with Makia, due to their appearance now being that of similar ages. He sees how his friends objectify Makia, and as it is later revealed, we see the tension in their relationship is largely due to a mutual dissatisfaction with their own capabilities. Ariel chooses to join the army, even despite knowing it will break Makia's heart. And shortly after, not to his knowledge, Makia is discovered and kidnapped by the ruling power. Makia endlessly doubts herself when it comes to her care for Ariel. Did she make the right choices? Did she do the right thing? She is constantly searching for what it means to be a mother, to grasp that intangible concept. Ariel is frustrated at his own inability, that he cannot live up to his promise, that he can't protect Makia even as he sees how much of a burden he puts upon her. However, his pride and immaturity make conveying that difficult, and their pained separation is created despite both sides bearing so much care for the other. Years later, Makia escapes the castle once more when war is breaking out, meeting Ariel's wife who is currently in labor, Ariel away with the army in the process of fighting. Seeing the child brings back to mind her memories of Ariel as a baby, reaffirming her love. A bit later, Ariel has been knocked out in battle and awakens to the care of Makia, and as she parts ways with him, he finally calls out to her, Ma. The scene is emotional, but for so many reasons beyond a sad parting. Ariel could not protect Makia. He feels guilty and ashamed, but he had to move forward. And in doing so, he found a new focus, something new to protect, forming a family of his own. We can't stay static. Even if our promises of past go unfulfilled, our expectations and plans unmet, the only thing we can do is move forward. There's no other direction to go. And that past isn't for naught, even if regrets are in it. Ariel, at his own open admittance, was shaped to be who he was by Makia. She taught him how to live, how to love, she taught him true strength. She is as true a mother as any, no matter their genetic differences. Ariel is ashamed he couldn't do more for her, that he couldn't at least make a down payment on this insurmountable debt he owes to her. Makia disagrees. Her love reaffirmed by memories recalled, just as strong now as in those years of his youth. She didn't expend that effort expecting an exchange. Ariel's happiness is her happiness, no matter what name he calls her. Thinking of Ariel and her love for him was what carried her through the years of captivity. In Makia's mind, he's already more than done his part. Those memories, the past, carry immense power, even when it's lost to you at the present. They cannot stay together though, even as Ariel calls for her not to leave. Makia no longer has a place here. Ariel has his own family to care for, and so she parts. Lelia is a fellow Yorf and captive. She was forced to bear a child with the king's son, in hopes that their traits could be carried genetically but it proved unsuccessful. She was kept locked away, not permitted to even see her own daughter. However, as the castle falls with this war underway, she finally meets her daughter, and they are able to share a brief moment together. However, they too must part ways even after their short time together. And as Lelia flies off aboard a dragon alongside Makia, she tells her, forget about me, I'll forget about you too. Makia responds with, You won't forget. Those memories, that love, as bitter as it is, will never leave your heart. It shouldn't leave your heart. 
That tiny taste of sweetness makes it more than worth the pain. And Makia knows this better than anyone. Makia and Ariel have one final reunion. As he lies at his deathbed, a full life behind him, she holds his hand and reflects wistfully, a sense of motherly pride exuding from her as she muses on the life he's lived, ultimately breaking her promise that mothers don't cry when Ariel's final breath passes. Yet, as she sets off for home, there's a smile on her face, even with the redness in her eyes. The sorrow and joy isn't mutually exclusive. Those memories won't leave us. That love will stay in our hearts forever. Don't forget. Don't be afraid. That's the message I see in Makia. Take advantage of the times you have together. Appreciate them even when they're gone. But don't be afraid to keep moving on. To find new relationships and new memories. Those beautiful flowers may have wilted, but they're still in your mind, your heart. So prepare yourself for the new ones that will bloom in the future, lest you miss out. Have a life rich and colorful. Pain's only one side to it. Thanks for watching. A very special thank you goes to my patron Talon, and if you too would like to help me do what I do, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash core reviews. Leave a like, subscribe, and maybe even share this video around if you think it's worthy. But with that said, I'll see you tomorrow.